Story time with Auntie D, take two. Not really. Um, okay, the first video I ran through the first part of chapter one, studying Scarlet. Okay. Uh, originally, I thought I was going to be doing this using a hard copy because my eyesight reading off the screen wasn't working. Uh, but most of the nearby libraries are still closed and it's still a whole procedure thing and it's uh, so alright nowadays waiting to get your hands on a hard copy it's ridiculous right I mean you're walking around with a tablet why would you do that okay uh, the thing of it is I can't make this thing I mean usually you know you, you, you push your fingers apart you, you can increase the font size although I can do that with the, the this is a Kindle Fire it um, I can do that with the uh, browser it's not working on the uh, on the uh, read overdrive uh, I opened it with the browser because if I download it, it takes too much storage on my thing, on my uh, tablet. Which comes into problems when I try to record with this thing because it kicks me off, right? And storage is too, reaches a critical point. So I try not to download stuff if I can help it. Anyway, yeah, it's not increasing. All right. Uh, the first video I had mentioned the fact that you can, um, if you choose classics, chances are you can get your your hands on a um, audio audio book. More importantly, a free audio book. Right? You have a library card. Right. Uh, I'm getting flashbacks. If you've been <laughs> You've gone to school as long as I have. You've tried just about every kind of study skill there is. Uh, and some some books suggest you record. Your go that is the worst. Talk about a waste of time. And you got to listen to it over and over again. I don't think I've ever gotten through a, a whole class listening to it more than once. Okay, You have to learn how to take notes because... Frankly, it's the easiest way to do that. I'm, I'm getting off topic. The big secret to that is read the, the material before you listen to the lecture. I can't overestimate that, okay? Because you know what's already in the book, so you're not wasting time writing stuff that you know is clearly stated in the book. Chances are you have a better idea of how something is spelled if you've read it. Yeah, and the teacher starts talking about it, whatever. Uh, push comes to stuff, she starts getting into details. You can flip over to the page and say, you know, refer back to page whatever. The teacher gets goes crazy with this stuff. So, the big secret to taking notes is read the material, read the chapter, assigned chapter before the lecture. That's the big, 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 big mystery to how taking notes actually works. I don't give a sh how skillful you are at taking notes. If you did, haven't read the chapter before you listen to it, you're a big disadvantage. And that's even when you're an expert note taker. If you don't know how to take notes, you are out of luck. So that's the big, big, big secret to taking notes. Read the chapter first. Then listen to the lecture. Have I ever gone into not doing that? All the time. <laughs> yeah, I come off like a big freaking expert. Yeah, take my own advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that is basically how you get to be a, a skillful note taker. You read the chapter first, then you listen to the lecture. That way you're not wasting time doing things for what she already knows. Okay, anyway.
that off topic. All right, back on the top. Um, so caught up in my own little <laughs> foibles, uh, flashbacks. Okay, the recording thing. Biggest waste of time. Okay. Uh, the audiobook. And plus, I keep on forgetting when you Google something nowadays, right? Whatever search engine you actually use, or whatever. The definition usually has the audio icon thing that you can click on and they say it out loud. So you don't even have to use a dictionary and use the pronunciation key with all that stuff. Which, by the way, still would have been easier than listening to the recording. Because think about it. You're listening to the audio recording. And then you're trying to remember, is that, was that the word I had problems with? Or, or was that, was you know, uh, yeah. It's easier just to read the darn thing over again, write down what the exact phrase, and then Google or whatever search engine it, and then click on the little audio icon. Okay. So, another thing, looking at the first video. Um, yeah, eye contact. Yeah, another course I, I took is uh, public speaking. Mm -hmm. Teacher always had to remind eye contact, more eye contact because <laughs> I'd write the darn thing down and just basically read it, which she got pissed off at me anyway because this is not a reading class, this is a speech class. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what. You, you handle public speaking whichever way you can manage, all right? So, no, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I got points taken off, and I'm never going to get better than a B because of it, but you know what? That's fine. Though, granted, uh, one or two times when I, the equipment has gone awry or whatever, and I've been left there, for whatever reason, without my little speech thing, or, or, or yeah, you can actually get through it because yeah. if you have written it out, timed it, read it as many times as you need to read it to make it sound natural, and then practice the eye contact. Uh, that's my thing. Because just the, the little index cards and just, yeah, like, yeah, 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 no. I mean, I don't know how high your people skills has to be for that to actually be a viable way to approach public speaking. <laughs> it's never going to happen with me. So, no. <clears throat> so I'll never get more than a B in that class. That's life. Fine. My people skills are not <laughs> overly developed and um, yeah not gonna happen um, anyway I'm fine with the B I have no problem with the B so that's fine ah, getting off topic again where was I? The audio books, right? Forget about the audio books. Just read through it again. Write down the word that gives you the problem. And Google it. Duck, duck, go it. Bing it. Whatever the heck you use, right? And click on the little audio thing. There it is. Uh, okay, so let's do that. Okay, again, I have a, I can't make this damn little potty now. I can't make this thing, I've tried for a few minutes to increase the font size. It won't do it for this thing. All right, so anyway, eye contact, yes.
<clears throat> enunciate. <clears throat> Don't slur your words. Peter Piper pecked the peck of pickles or whatever. She sells seashells by the seashore or whatever. Okay. Um. All right. This is a uh, uh, study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. I'm not a royalist, a monarchist, so I'm not going to bother with all that stuff. He's well known. If you don't know him without the little title, too bad. Uh, which is going to be difficult because they never put the title on the library catalog, so good luck with that. Um, all right. Doyle wrote this thing. Chapter 1. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. In the year 1878, I took my degree of Doctor of Medicine of the, Univer okay. of the University of London and proceeded to Netley to go through the course prescribed for surgeons in the army. Having completed my studies there, I was duly attached to the 5th Northumberland. There we go. I don't waste too much time. Anything that has a derivative of French anything, you're going to say it wrong. Well, so, all right. Uh, I left this screen small, so I'm not going to have too com much of a time getting to other screens. I've got to keep in mind, though, that the camera is still rolling and can see me, even though I can't see the image. So, okay, I've got, excuse me, I'm going to be looking all over the place. Okay, so I'm using DuckDuckGo, but whatever. Uh, F U S I L. Is that again? I wish I could make this font bigger, but I can't figure it out. Okay, uh, whatever definition, click on that. I keep on forgetting. Hello. Hey. Okay. So, I'm not really concerned about the definition, but uh, I'm looking for, hmm, this thing doesn't have a little audio thing. So, I don't even care what definition it's going to give me. Okay, I lie a little. The definition is a soldier in any of certain British Army regiments formerly armed with fusils. A soldier armed with a fusil. An infantryman armed with a form of flint flintlock musket? Is that what a fusil is? Okay. Anyway, excuse me, I'm looking at a picture, and yeah, it does kind of look like a flintlock musket. It's called musket. Pieces. A soldier in any of certain British Army regiments formerly armed with pieces. Soldier armed with a fusil. An infantryman armed with a form of flint lock musket. So, if you've ever been to Disney World, one of those souvenir shops, I'm sure you've seen a replica of a, a, a flint lock musket. Expensive. <laughs> but anyway, uh, okay. Well, I'm from Florida. We're more likely to have gone to Disney World than a museum, so excuse the heck out of me. All right? Yes, I've been to museums, and I've seen them in museums as well. I'm just saying. All right. Excuse me. I want one with... Let's see if this definition... Oh, here we go. Fusilier. 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 
Okay. All right. And anyone who's, uh, I believe I mentioned this before, I like taking notes using my email thing since I can get access to it most, most of the time. And since I am familiar with Spanish, crazy old Cuban lighting, right? Uh, Fusilier. I can write things out phonetically. So I do tend to switch back and forth between <laughs> Spanish and English way of writing out. Phonetically, anyway. Okay, Lear. I'm gonna cap all the the letters in that. And it will have it will get me close enough to be able to pronounce it. Okay? I've written it out F U hyphen S I hyphen all those in lowercase and then in uppercase L E E R which is not a good excuse me Fusilier Fusilier I do it. Dictionary, do this. Oh, that's English for sure. All right, we did it. F Y. I know you're gonna hate me for that one. O O hyphen S I hyphen and then in caps L E E R. Yes, I'm a geek. I use a lot of pronunciation charts that you find in dictionaries. So that wasn't too much of a stretch for me. Fusilier. Yeah. Fusilier. Fusilier. Alright. It just has to make sense to you. Alright? There is an advantage to being a geek. There's no getting around it. There is an advantage to having already been accustomed to using a pronunciation chart that you find in dictionaries. Sorry. No getting around it. Uh, otherwise, if you speak or have knowledge of a phonetic language like Spanish, you can lean on that. In which case, I probably would have spelled it F I U U C A. We don't have the I sound, we have the E sound. Fuse it. Layer. Fuse it. Fuse it. Layer. No. I would have had to mix it up. Fuse the layer. Anyway. It's not a difficult word to say, so maybe you're just better off saying it five to ten times. Fusilier, 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 fusilier. If that works better for you, go for it. If you're a bit of a, of a geek and you're already used to using a um, pronunciation chart, 
I'm going to switch over so I can see what I'm looking like because I'm, I'm looking, I'm staring at a, a, a this little pinpoint white light thing. Hold on, let me see what I'm looking at. Oh, there I am. Okay. No, I think that comes out better because now I've got to look at my face. Okay. <laughs> God. Okay. Um, yeah. I probably was better off just talking straight to the camera. Um, yeah. So, if you're a geek, again, sorry, you do have an advantage. You're already used to using pronunciation charts, so it's not too much of a stretch to write out using whatever sound occurs to you. Then it'll probably reflect the uh, the dictionary you usually use. Sorry. Geek's advantage. Uh, otherwise, just say it a few times. Fusilier, 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 Fusilier. And do your best to, you know, write it down in a way that it, you'll at least it'll connect the two, you know, close enough so you can, yeah, fusel there. It's a very easy word to say, nothing very tricky, so, hey, that's a good point. Anyway, fusel there. Infantry, that guy who, who uses a musket, apparently. All right. Soldier armed with a fusel. You know, I must frequently look up a fusel to make sure you're talking about a musket. Just because I'm a geek and I do things like that. You see when one thing bleeds into another, extends into the homeschooling? That always happens. You're not working from a teacher's lesson plan. You know, so jump and just get to the points. Boom, 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 and, and that's it. Uh... It kind of it kind of flows all, <laughs> which means it's kind of hodgepodge, and you may not have developed the certain points that they want you to develop to the extent they want you to develop it. But uh, you're going to be able, chances are you're going to be more well-rounded, so and uh, less dogmatic. No, I lie because if you're homeschooling, it's probably because your parents are very dogmatic. <laughs> so I take that back. I take that back. Okay, uh, fusel. A light flintlock musket. All right. So yeah, uh, fusilier, an infantryman, a soldier armed with a musket. Fusilier. So yeah. All right. So that's the really just overkill. It won't take you that long once you get into the flow of it. Though admittedly, until you figure out which is the easiest approach for you, <laughs> it'll take a minute. But once you get that approach and you kind of fine tune it, you can start. Yeah, it, it'll it'll flow a lot better. But right now, I'm just you know groping around trying to and explaining it, which is it's gonna slows you down considerably. Uh, this page is asking from that you want to leave. No, stay on the page. I don't know why it's doing that. Fusilier, infantryman armed with a musket. All right. Okay. Do I just leave a little bright light thing? Okay. Yeah, go on with it. Uh, fifth Northumberland Fusiliers as assistant surgeon. I can let's go back to the place. Hey, there I am. All right, I'll move back. I'll try to get as close to the right under the uh light 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> Fusiliers, and system switches. Eye contact, eye contact, yes. Uh, the regiment was stationed in India, which, oh, which means you have to mark your spot by having your thumb run along the line, like a bookmark, so you don't lose your place, because that's going to be a pain. Yeah. All right. The regiment was stationed in India at the time, and before I can join it, the Second Afghan War had broken out. On landing at Bombay, hmm, I learned that my corps had advanced through the passes and was already deep in the enemy's country. I followed, however, with many other officers who were in the same situation as myself and succeeded in reaching, oh, here we go, Kandahar. I'm probably saying it right. Kandahar. Kandahar. I may or may not be saying it right, but I'm okay with that. Kandahar. I'm going to leave it like that. Alright. In safety, where I found my regiment, and at once entered upon my new duties. The camp... Okay. Keep my place again. Because eye contact. Oh, okay. The campaign brought honors and promotion to many, but for me it had nothing but misfortune and disaster. I was removed from my brigade and attached to the Berkshires. 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 I'm not trying to say it with a British accent, so. The audio version may indeed say Berkshires or whatever Berkshires. So. We're not in the UK, so Berkshires, Berkshires. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I know I could be completely wrong, but I'm okay with that. All right, Berkshires. With whom I served at the fatal battle. of Molland. I'm not okay with that. Molland. Molland. Oh, that just sounds too damn wrong. You may be right. Molland. I'm not okay with that. Excuse me. Okay. Molland. Oh, the one I ended up going to is Merriam Webster. The online dictionary because it had the little audio thing. Yeah, so I'm still doing that. So I'm using their search uh, bo text box, their search box. Modern. Okay. The word you've entered isn't in the dictionary. Clean, click on the spoil and below and try. Oh, you came in the what's it's. Maybe if I capitalize it? Well, it shouldn't. No there. Okay, I'm gonna go open another thing and look on. See that I cut and paste. I'm lazy like that. Duck, duck, go again. Paste. Marlin Bank? Marlin 1880? Marlin 1880. That sounds about the right year. Battle of Marlin. Oh, there we go. Excuse me. I can't see it until I'm sticking my face in. The Battle of whatever it is. On the 27th of July 1880 was one of the principal battles of the Second Anglo-Afghan War under the leadership of Ayub Khan. The Afghans defeated a much smaller force consisting of two brigades of British and Indian troops under Brigadier General George Burroughs, albeit at a high price between 2050 and 2750 Afghan Pashtun warriors were killed and probably about 1,500 wounded. 
British and Indian forces suffered 969 soldiers killed and 177 wounded. All right, so that is the right thing, but is anyone going to, uh, they're going to make me do the audio book. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't want to. So, hmm, let's see Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. I've gone back to the Duck Duck Go text box. Uh, hmm. Okay. How? You pronounce. I'm going to capitalize it. No. Oh, well, it, they don't. How do you pronounce? I'm not getting anything in the suggest thing. How do you pronounce? No. Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. Huh. See in English. Pronunciation of them. The three audio pronunciations. One meaning, six sentences, and more. Okay. Maywand. Maywand. Alright. Maywand. Maywand. May want. May want. Okay. May want. Okay, it's capitalized. Meanings. Okay, and this thing. Okay, it's from how to pronounce. Darn useful. I'm going to put that in my notes. I've got the www.howtopronounce.com slash maywand. Okay, uh, meanings. Maywand is a village in Afghanistan. Awesome. So, verified right there. And I'm going to copy and paste that too. May. Hyphen one. And as you might guess, um, oh, all this in lowercase letters. M A Y hyphen W A N D. May want. Okay. And just keep it from getting too messy. I'm going to separate Fusilier and Maywand. I just a line of hyphens to separate the two. Because this can get this gets messy pretty fast if you don't do that. I probably should have done the definition for fuselier. Okay. And also fusel. I like that one. Sounds good. Copy. Okay. Alright. This has been long enough and my <laughs> and, and, and um Big Bang Theory is about to start, so, but you get the idea, right? Um, to have to go through the audio recording, 
at least nowadays it's more trouble than it's worth if you're okay with the, uh, the way you pronouncing something even if you're not sure if you're pronouncing it right just go with it I mean if someone is really bothered by it they'll let you know and then you can do your research to verify it don't take anyone's word for it you know because they might say that's actually happened uh, <laughs> oh my god uh, yeah, I was a. When, when I was a kid, my, my. Okay, I remember being in a class. Uh, the student was reading something in English. The teacher corrected the student. Unfortunately, the student had been right, and the teacher's pronunciation was so completely off. It, it was kind of shocking. So I just, yeah. If someone corrects you, verify it. Don't take anyone's word for it. All right, but uh, that's that's really that's really a kicker. Okay. So I got Fusil, uh, which is a light flint lock, flint lock pronunciation, musket, let me go back another, Fusilier, okay, we'll get both of them, a soldier armed with a Fusil, uh, a member of a British regiment formerly armed with Fusils. So, all right. And the other two words, okay, I may be wrong, but I'm okay with it. So, really, if, if, you, if you're fine with it, leave it alone. And if someone corrects you, double check. And if you're not fine with it, look it up not a big issue and nowadays it's easier than ever before I'm a World War One enthusiast and I thought oh god one of these days I'm gonna to have to learn French just to be able to continue you know just to really get into you know studying oh my show's on um, skip to the chase you don't have to do that anymore we had, we just go online and you press the little uh, audio thing. Boom, there it is. Thank goodness. I, I did not want to learn French. So, yeah, okay. Uh, that's it. Let me, uh, so I can see what I'm looking at. Oh, there I am. Hey, hello. Okay. Uh, that's it. Um, I don't think that's all I had mentioned. What was it? Recording for a uh, Google audio thing. Eye contact, eye contact, yeah. Those are the three points that those were and enunciate. I'm short sorry, I'm not speaking loud enough and I'm not enunciating. But also yeah. Kick up the volume. Whatever it is, headphones or what which I'm not Okay. Uh, I've gotten used to doing this in this atmosphere so hush tones slurred I've got to consciously think about not doing either and eye contact and eye contact okay yeah okay I'll never get over a B I'm okay with that all right so this is video two of uh, getting this uh, story time up and running so, okay. Uh, story time with Auntie D signing off. Talk to you later.